Years ago, there was a song by John Lennon. And uh, imagine, yeah, imagine. Everybody loves the song since a great song, you know. Not a good song. Very bad song. Very bad idea. I don't think he meant bad. And there's one line there. It says, imagine there's no heaven. Above us only sky. <clears throat> so what's, what's so wrong about it? What's so wrong about not having a heaven? If you ask most people today, if you go, you know, you guys go to school, you know, you come, you know, not religious people, Jews and not Jews alike. You ask them if they want to go to heaven, if they believe in heaven, they will tell you, no. Many people uh, in Israel, they call themselves secular, chilonim. In America, because of the need of everybody to identify themselves with something, so they have a different name for it. Some people are called uh, atheists. Some people are call themselves agnostics. They, even know, they don't even know what agnostic, agnosticism is. Yeah, you want to look at the definition of what's an atheist? People don't really know what those things are. But they're saying, so if you ask them, what's, uh, why don't you believe in that? Why don't you believe, for example, in heaven? Yeah, you found it? Yeah, read it. A person who does not believe in the existence of a god or any gods. One. Yeah. Okay. You don't believe in the existence of God, but you do acknowledge that there is a God. You just choose not to believe in it. That's an oxymoron as far as I'm concerned. So if you ask him, why don't you want to go to heaven? Why don't you believe in heaven? So they will tell you, show me a person that went there and came back. Show me a video. Show me a proof. First of all, why is there to need to be a proof for everything that you have? Well, because religion is bad. You know, I don't believe in it because religion is bad. There's all those atrocities and adopting in the name of the religion and blah, 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 blah. Which is true. There's a lot of wrongdoing done in the name of religion, whether the Crusades, whether it's blowing up the the the, the, the twin towers and you know whatever happened in September 11, or throwing people off uh, rooftops in in Iraq because they're homosexuals and then tie them with the head. Up. That's wrong. That's wrong. But. The lack of belief in a heaven is destructive to our society. Well, first of all, because when I don't believe that there is a place that is heaven and it's not guaranteed to me to go, I need to work for it. Right? So therefore, there's nothing for me to strive for and to become better or try to become better towards a better goal. There's nothing for me to look forward to. And when I don't, and, I, and I'm not here, this, I'm not going to try to convince you that there is a heaven or there isn't a heaven. Or, you know, that's just a theological thing. And I don't want to sound like a Christian and tell you it's all about faith because it's not faith, it's a fact. But this is not what the scope of what I'm trying to tell you here. So, and, and, when you don't have any, any, anything to go forward to, there's nothing to propel you in life, all of a sudden life seems to be a very big, uh, confusing place that you are stuck in. And we don't, deal, we don't teach people how to deal with life. I'm going to tell you, according to Jewish uh, theology, uh, heaven is not necessarily have to be somewhere in, you know, in the heavens. Heaven is here. When God created Adam and Eve, He created them in where? In, in, and the Torah gives us exactly, you know, uh, 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 boundaries of where it is. You know, in the area between the uh, the Euphrates, the Tigris, the uh, the uh, the Nile. That area is is that's where heaven was. Heaven could be here. 
So when we don't have anything to strive for, all of a sudden life is a drag. And life is a drag. And I have, I have a problem. If you want to know, I think, why there is such a great usage nowadays of, of drugs is because I think nobody believes in heaven anymore. Again, you could be Christian, Muslim, leave the seven two virgins to the side, you know, Jew. But if there's nothing for me to go through, so this is all it. And if I look around me, it's like, oh my goodness, this is like, it just doesn't make sense. So then I get, I get depressed. I don't, I'm not being taught. Nobody's teaching you, by the way, how to manage your life better, how to manage your body better. The Rambam, the Shulchan Aruch, in the Shulchan Aruch, you're going to find halachot, Jewish law, of how to conduct your body better. What you should eat, where you should, how you should take a shower, right? how you should do all this thing. Not because it's a mind-controlling you know, uh, you know, book or, or manual. It's how to do things appropriately. This is the owner manual. This is this is how I'm supposed to do. Unfortunately, in Judaism, we kind of veer off the whole health thing, and we just leave it now to you know, to all kind of cooks. Like you have you have COVID. Okay, so make yourself some ginger tea with the cinnamon and the cloves, and mm -hmm. that will be. I mean, come on, give me a break. You want to know about nutrition? There is not a problem going to school or learning about nutrition. You, your, that's your thing. You could be a perfectly well-educated, smart, good-looking rabbi or ugly-looking rabbi, and you could be an expert in nutrition. Go to school, go learn it. There's not a problem going to school. Absolutely. Now, the problem is that we don't manage our body right because there's no purpose in life. It's not work. You have to understand. The whole even expansion to space, you know, Elon Musk oil, whatever, you know, he wants to conquer. The, give me a break. The most sophisticated, you, you take the, the supercomputers that are in the NSA and Google and all those things. They don't even come close. And here's, you have here an, uh, you have a, an oncologist, a dear friend. I'm sorry, hematologist oncologist. Dr. B.A., D.B.A., doing business as. The most sophisticated machine is your body. Your body. We, we try to conquer space. We don't even understand what's going on in our body. You want to control the whole entire world. You can't control your own self. So my body, my, my whole being is not feeling good and harmonized. I need to take drugs. And when I start taking drugs, it's not good enough. So I have to use more drugs and better drugs. I mean, with the strains of, of pot that there is today, I mean, any, I mean, which is ridiculous. Anywhere you walk in the streets of New York, you're, small, you're smoking pot. I mean, I, I might think I'm in like in a... In a you know, uh, end, of, end of the year celebration somewhere in Jamaica, in like downtown Rasta Man. You know, it's like everybody's smoking pot. The strengths of pot are so strong today, I think they could get a T-Rex and give them the munchies. You know, they're so strong. It's crazy. Because I can't lift myself up. So I need alcohol. I need, I need drugs. I need... Sex, and I need sex not because of it's meaningful or it's meaning to me, because it produces a certain type of chemicals in my head. And I need those chemicals to, to keep on going, because if I pull the meaning out of my life, there's nowhere for me to go, and, I, and I'm going to veg out in, in deep depression, won't be able to go out. So I need those, those serotonins and dopamines and all those things. But for crying out loud, you don't need it. You just try to, for example, become the best that you could become in what you do. If you do a job and you do it great, you have a sense of satisfaction, of accomplishment. 
so your brains would, would, would produce those chemicals. You achieve something. You finish a daf of Gemara. That's why learning Torah is important. You finish a daf. I turn it. I finish a Mishnah. I turn it. I finish a Masechta. I attract it. I, I'm done. I accomplish something. The sense of, of endless process with no, with no purpose is, is, is terrible for all of us. And especially now that you took the carpet off the, what is so-called heaven, there's no way for me to strive. I mean, in other words, this is it. And you know what they say? You know what this is? This is it. That's it. Nothing else. So that's what I call came about. This is what it's all about. So telling people there's no heaven is taking hope and a chance of, of society in that song John Lennon talked about a utopian world. But basically the idea behind it is devastating. It's terrible. Because you took any kind of hope for a person to strive for another day, to become better, to go into a better place and so on. And, and again, and I'm telling you, it, not necessarily that it's heaven is in the heavens. Even if you claim that heaven is here, to make this world into a better place, to take care of our bodies, to take care of, to have meaning in our lives. The same thing as the concept of Gehenom is not necessarily hell, because there is a great infiltration of, of foreign concepts, mainly from Christianity and, and also from Sufi Islam into, into Judaism. And this, that's a, it's a natural thing. It's a give and take. It it's, it's always happens into that infiltrated us. I don't believe that the concept of Gehenom, the way we have it today, is authentically, necessarily authentically Jewish. I don't think so, and I dare to say it, and I don't care. If you look at the word Gehenom, it sounds like Gay Ben Hinom, the guy of Ben Hinom. And the guy of Ben Hinom is a valley on the outskirts of Jerusalem, on eastern Jerusalem, right? Right between Temple Mount and, and uh, Mount Olives over there, Gay Ben Hinom. And over there, they used to sacrifice the kids, and they used to burn the kids by the, by the fire, by the Molach. And God said, I hate this place. I think the concept of, of hell could also be here on earth. Having life without purpose is hell. Having life without God in your life is hell. Mm -hmm. So to the agnostics and to the, uh, to the other, you know, whatever the people make up to me, because they need to be something, Tell you living the concept of heaven and hell here, you don't need a proof. Look around you. That's heaven or hell. Depends how you go about it. Unfortunately, that's the need of many or the trend of many governments. Instead of providing people with hope, they're providing people with dope. And that's a huge problem. And it's all once you once you, you start feeding from, from the hands of governments and bodies like this, you won't be able to separate from the tentacles and you'll be doomed for life. And hope is a big thing in human, in human uh, resilience. People that have hope will strive for it, will fight for it, will do whatever they can for it, and eventually along the line become better people. Now that we took hope for people, we are what we are. So Rabotai, set yourself small goals in life. Goals that you could achieve daily. Not just big goals, daily goals that you could do. Could be anything, learning, learning something new. You're never too old to learn something new. If you decided that you're too old to learn something new, you know, call the social security, tell them you want to go in retirement because you, you, you're done. Set yourself small goals. It could be cleaning up your place. That's a goal. Today I'm going to clean my place. That's a goal. Make sure you execute this goal. Start reading new things. Learn a new language. Learn, you know, for crying out loud, learn some martial arts. Learn to defend yourself. That's also a goal. Yes, and, and, and for that matter, 
I will be an advocate of getting belts because the belts also, oh, I got something, I got to go, I got to go. Okay, I got from this belt to that belt and so on and so forth. Learn something so you feel good about yourself. I can defend myself. That's good. Learn a new skill, learn a new craft, learn a new language. Learn something. Achieve. But it has to be daily. Let other people live their hope. Become a vehicle of hope, hope provider, not a dope provider. And before you know, this world does, would turn into a heaven. When we are saying that when Mashiach comes, this world will be perfect, in a way we are saying this world would be heaven, heaven on earth. Heaven on earth can only come when we have hope. Because without the concept of heaven on earth or up there, it's all gone. So have a very hopeful heavenly day.